Hello, everyone. Just going to give a moment or two to let everybody log in before we start. Nice to see everyone this afternoon. Finally have some rain in our neck of the woods. We're so happy to see that. Good. Everybody's logging in. Perfect. Appreciate that. Well, I am Robin Jones. I'm the director of the ABF Career Alliance. And this is episode 31 of The Net Effect. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for this biblical-based webinar series. I'm so excited about our program today. It's gonna to be fun, full of inspiration and ideas that you can share with others. But before we get started, we always have a few housekeeping items. If you're not seeing me and you want to, but you can't, maybe you need to run and download Zoom. Um, that enables you to be able to participate in our Q&A. So at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little toolbar and it has an icon for Q&A. If you guys would open that, I would really appreciate that. And if you'll type in your name and where you're from, I'd appreciate it. Hey, Chris, good to see you. Jan, thank you. You guys know the drill. I love it. Perfect. Looks like our Q&A is working. Great. Good to see everyone. Penelope and Barrett, good to see you guys. Thank you. Hi, Janie. Sally, perfect. Looks like we're up and running. I will say that chat has been disabled. So if you're trying to communicate on chat, please use the q and I'll be monitoring that throughout the session today. And I encourage you to ask questions. We love questions. And I will monitor those and get those to our lovely guest I'm going to introduce here shortly. Um, great. Looks like everything's working. Super. All right. Great. So um, we are the Albert Baker Fund. The Net Effect is sponsored by the Albert Baker Fund, and we are impacting the lives of nearly a thousand Christian scientists annually uh, for their education. We're really grateful for that and grateful to be able to do that, and that's why we're able to do this Net Effect uh, webinar series that we have. So if you have any questions, be sure and check our website out, thealbertbakerfund.org, and you'll find lots of wonderful resources and information to answer your questions. But if you have further questions, you can obviously reach out through our contact button at the top of the screen on the right hand side. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Becca and Alex today. So nice to have you both. They're coming from the lovely mountains of Pennsylvania, right almost in the heart of of Pennsylvania country when everybody knows where that is now with all the things happening, but it's nice and quiet where they are and lovely with great spirit. So um, I'm not going to talk a little bit about, uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about their bio and I'm just going to just say that Becca is the camp director and Alex is the camp administrator and they're a part of a team that helps manage and run Crystal Lake camps there in um, Pennsylvania. So um, without further ado, let's get started on their journeys. And both of them decided to go to this little Midwestern school in the heart of um, the Illinois country. And I thought we'd kind of switch off a little bit and have a little fun here. And I have a couple questions for both of them. And I I always ask this question. Um, I think people enjoy hearing it, but why, why a small liberal uh, art school in the Midwest? And maybe Becca, you can kick it off for us. Sure, well, hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Um, yeah, why Print College, small, small school? Well, I did go to Principia Upper School and Upon looking for different schools to attend for college and university, I 
really did not feel like I had a whole lot of support there. And I wasn't really making great efforts at doing anything to look for what school I wanted to go to. Um, and I was encouraged to go uh, visit Perrin College. So I did that and I really loved it. Just loved the small class sizes, loved the focus on Christian science, um, loved that I would be able to play sports and um, yeah, just really, I fell in love with the professors who would then be my professors uh, in my area of study. So I really enjoyed the visit and that's what sold me on print. <laughs> nice. How about you, my friend, Alex? Yeah. So I also went to print upper school and I was a boarder. So I was living in California at the time and the high school at that where I was living wasn't the best in the area. So decided to go to a print upper school. And then after going to the upper school and being a boarder there, decided to go to the college due to the accessibility of it mostly. I had already formed a community there and I had an opportunity to explore what I wanted. Um, and I didn't have limited options among other places. So it was definitely the accessibility that, that drew me to but so Becca, tell us a little bit about um, what you studied and kind of what kind of got you into, you know, kind of your interest in college and your major and what you did while you were there. Sure. Um, I was a global perspectives major. Uh, I think currently it's called global studies, but it's an interdisciplinary major, um, which means that you're looking through different lenses uh, and specifically for global perspectives, you're looking at global complex problems and possible solutions through the lenses of, an, of a few areas of study. And I chose history, sociology, and women and gender studies. Um, and what kind of got me there, I've always enjoyed history um, and kind of you see this, <laughs> the picture on the right <laughs> uh, in the shadows there, I'm, uh, that's me as a camper. Yes, I'm wearing a mini skirt in the woods. I, it was the 90s, that's all I'll say, early 2000s, what are you gonna do? So um, at camp, which is Crystal Lake Camps, um, I made a lot of friends who happened to live outside of the United States. And so I'd always had kind of a background and an interest in kind of looking globally. And so when I found out that you could study history and, you know, world studies um, and sociology all in one go, I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Um, and from that um, kind of connecting Christian science from, you know, growing up in Christian science, working at camp, going to camp, learning about Christian science and continuing that at Prin, um, the major really helped focus on how to pray about global complex problems. Um, something that I, that I felt was really strengthened uh, at my time at Prin. I'm really grateful for that. Um, yeah. So, um, Tell us a little bit about this. Um, I mean, it kind of looks like a, a, a muddy mess, but I'm not sure. I mean, what's happening here? This is a photo from um, the 2015 leadership training program. Um, myself and two others were co-leading this program and we were off to our, uh, you know, couple day, four or five day hiking trip. Um, here near where the camp is located, there's a, um, a trail system called the Loyal Sock Trail. And so the leadership trainees uh, get to experience four or five days of some amazing hikes through the endless mountains um, and some roughing it times in the rain. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we're about to depart and everyone, you know, just looks overjoyed as they should. <laughs> so some of the things you did at camp, while you were in school, kind of going back to that, um, you, you, you mentioned that you went on some study abroads and those were impactful. Tell us a little bit about what you learned and how 
how that impacted your life and helped change and focus you in different ways. Sure. Um, this photo actually is, yeah, the study abroad, I had the great opportunity of attending and going on um, was Tibet. And it was a, a fairly short abroad as you know, getting visas into Tibet is a little complicated. Um, and I was really interested in this abroad uh, because I felt like going to Tibet is not something I could just, you know, buy a plane ticket and, and just sort of do. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than going, you know, maybe to South America or to Europe or, you know, another location like that. Um, and the focus of this abroad was studying uh, what true freedom is. Um, and it wasn't a major specific or study specific abroad. So the whole crew, different backgrounds, um, different areas of study, and many of them were uh, from Brazil, which was super fun. So got to learn a lot about Brazilian culture on that abroad um, and made a lot of great friends. Um, and yeah, so that study on freedom and seeing kind of through a historical and sociological lens, um, experiencing something that was very contradictory to what freedom, uh, my perception of what freedom was, um, and talking and learning about how to work that prayerfully uh, is something that I continue to do daily. Um, <laughs> whether it's, you know, bounds of, you know, mental bounds or physical bounds in whatever form they might appear to be, that's certainly something I carry with me um, and carried with me for the rest of my time in college um, at camp and now here as the camp director. So tell us a little bit about as you kind of got into your senior year and after your senior year, um, what, what transpired at that point? So graduated and like many people, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Oh, that's um, what I was trying to get to so, right there. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, just really no clue. From high school, you know, people would ask, oh, what, you know, what's your five-year plan? Or uh, in college, like, what do you even want to study? What do you want to do with your life? Just really had no, no concept, no clue. Um, and so after, after college, a good friend and I um, decided we were both working at different summer camps that summer, um, but we were, you know, talking on our days off and stuff and uh, coordinated that we would buy tickets to New Zealand and do um, the woofing, the worldwide organization of organic farming, um, or like work away sort of a program just to kind of like go and experience. Um, so we bought one way tickets because of course, that's all you can afford at that rate and um, and ended up being there and uh, didn't actually connect with any of the woofers or the workaway people. And so we felt a little stuck, but through some great prayerful guidance, uh, we were shepherded and sheltered and we landed ourselves a job, um, an actual paying job at a grazing station on the South Island. And so there we are, um, mucking boots and all, and worked with cattle and sheep uh, for a couple of months. And how did you find a job where you didn't know anyone in a country that was um, obviously you spoke the, the same language somewhat? How did you how did you happen to find that job? Great question. <laughs> um, so my friend actually knew somebody from uh, her time at a different camp um, whose parents were involved with holistic farming and she had remembered that her friend had actually worked somewhere in new zealand and thought you know maybe we could reach out and, and do the same um and so through <laughs> a friend of a friend we got connected with this grazing station and they were really keen on having us join uh, because they were in a transition period where they were kind of laying off a lot of people and needing some new people to come in and just you know get the work done while they made adjustments for longer term employees um, 
And so, of course, that felt very like God opened it up for us. And <laughs> neither of us, you know, we both grew up in Connecticut, no farming, like didn't know anything. Um, but here we were working in New Zealand on a station. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty incredible. So like not something I would ever expect to have ever done in my lifetime, but was probably a hugely impactful experience for me. Well, Mr. Alex, you've been quite patient, and but now it's your turn. So let me take you back and to that place where you're entering into Principia College and uh, you're uncertain about what's happening. So tell us a little bit about how and where you spent your time and how you decided on the major that you eventually chose. Right. So I, <laughs> and uh, it's quite the story, um, but I came in as a freshman to Principia College, not really, again, too much of an idea of what I wanted to do. And I was walking through the library and um, I remember seeing, come across uh, one of the professors, uh, John Williams, and uh, he he said, hi, I'm John Williams. I said, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Alex. And he's like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm going to challenge everything you have to say. And I was kind of taken aback. And I was like, well, that's a pitch. I'm hooked. <laughs> so um, talked to him some more. Found out he was a political science professor and um, that there were only two other professors in the department. So it's a pretty small department. But in talking to each of them, I found that I was really, really, I really connected to just understanding how and why people want to do what they do and um, the, the steps people take to do that. And so getting into politics was, I think, just a way for me to help connect my work with Christian science to the global scale, almost a lot like Becca was mentioning. Um, and in terms of camp, I mean, this camp has been international for, as long as I've been here. So just having that background and understanding um, with so many people and friends that you've connected to around the world, uh, it was a, just a natural step in being able to communicate with them more than just in the sphere of, of um, the United States society and just going to school and being peers, but actually being global peers and understanding each other on a, a different level and being able to, for me to step over my line and go and talk to them. So it was, it was a mixture of all that, but really finding that Christian science and politics don't have to be separate, but it can be really something we can work towards all together. So I, I've heard you say that politics doesn't have to be divided, dividing, or doesn't have to divide us or polarize us. Why, why do you say that? Well, I say that because the goal of politics, for the most part, all around is working to achieve a goal that people see there, there's a problem with. So, um, for example, I can't sit here and say what somebody else's problem is or is not. That is not for me. That is only, I can only understand what my problems are um, or those are one who are around me. And so going off of that, that means that there's problems that both people want to address or both sides or all three or four or five sides want to address. Um, and as a Christian scientist, your, your work and benefit um, through prayer can't impoverish anyone else. That's not something that can can polarize just in and of itself. If, if, if that was true, it wouldn't be Christian science. It wouldn't be true. So in looking in that, I've been really finding that that there are some problems that we that are do need to be addressed as a group because if you were to admit anyone, that's not what God's kingdom is about. We can't admit anyone because <laughs> that includes everyone. And uh, really understanding and growing in my understanding of that, of being patient and really listening to what 
the underlying issue is, even if I hear something that I don't particularly agree with or, or like, uh, that doesn't mean that it's not resonating with someone for some reason. So understanding why that is. So both of you after graduation um, ended up fairly quickly working at a role at camp, it's Crystal Lake camp. Is that, is that fair to say to everyone? And just so that everyone knows, tell us a little bit about, you, you talked about earlier that this is international camp. So I, I, I pulled this map up and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I, I know when I've been there and uh, been doing workshops for the staff that sometimes I hear Russian and sometimes I hear Portuguese and sometimes I hear Spanish. So tell us a little bit about um, the whole international aspect of camp. Sure. Um, well, historically, um, in the 80s, one of the board members from CLC um, was moved to Mexico and in their time there saw, you know, there are Christian scientists in my area. Uh, they should also enjoy camp. And so <laughs> that sort of started um, the international program, uh, it's not really a program, it's just now sort of our, it's just how we do camp. Um, and so yes, we have campers and staff uh, from all over the world and we make a very intentional outreach to have a large camper and staff population from outside of the United States, um, which just really allows for a lot of not only diversity, uh, but a lot of understanding and harmony demonstrated and um, just a lot of learning. Um, and so it's been really fun. But yeah, we have campers that come um, and we work with those families on on getting them to camp uh, and the staff as well. <laughs> um, it's just part of who we are and what we do. Anything you'd like to add to that, Alex? Um, I think the only thing that I would add is uh, speaking to, obviously, the international aspect. It really helps, and I've seen, and through my own personal experience, seen that it really gets the campers thinking outside of themselves. Uh, and it, it, was a, it was a case for me as well. Um, both of my parents are from outside of the U.S., and so having that and coming to camp and being able to see other people that are from Kenya, like where my parents are from, or from Mexico and, and seeing how they interact with each other. And I've made some really good friends just through camp, two weeks. And, you know, I can, I can call them up anytime and just talk to them and, or ask them about anything. And it, the selflessness that comes with that, realizing that you among these other campers are part of this family is something that I, no one here would disagree with. Everyone loves that aspect of camp. They come to see their international friends because it's the it's time that they can. And they go through a lot to make sure that they get here. So it's always awesome to see how far they're willing to reach to, to keep in contact. And I think also like it sort of helped frame to the campers and staff that their experience in Christian science, you know, it's not just them in their Sunday school, but you know, God is everywhere. And there are Christian scientists around the world that this is a global movement. And I think that that's really powerful and something that you can very tangibly see uh, when the campers and staff and family camp guests um, are here on site. Well, I, I know as a camp director, you're pretty busy, Becca. And as the camp administrator, um, Alex, you're equally as busy. I've seen both of you when I've been there. Um, tell us a little bit, of Becca, about the kind of things that you do and the kind of role that you play and the kind of responsibilities and job, you know, job responsibilities that you have. Kind of a, you know, overview and then some of the day-to-day -day stuff. Sure. 
Um, so a big part of my job is camper and staff recruiting. So from these photos, the travel ones, I get to go and travel around the world and across the US uh, to talk with potential staff and campers and camper families. Uh, definitely solid part of the job. <laughs> Um, I hire all of the summertime staff and I do all the HR sort of paperwork uh, stuff for them and with them. Um, then I oversee the summertime staff during the summer and, you know, manage different areas, the waterfront, uh, sometimes kitchen. Um, so yeah, just sort of big picture overseeing and supervising. Um, I help with our our non-summer programs that we run. We have a few Christian science or mission related programs in the non-summer months, in addition to our ski and outdoor center, um, which I now do not do, but I did in the past, but now we have somebody that does that, which is wonderful. Um, and I help with the, the marketing um, and I'm sure there's more. Uh, <laughs> well, I have a question but, yes. for you because <laughs> One of the things that stood out when we were talking um, offline, and that was the, the idea of youth empowerment. You, you stated that that was one of the reasons that you were attracted to working at camp and, 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 so, you know, and, and doing this kind of a job as, a, as opposed to something else. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, yeah, I kind of forgot to mention this part of my, uh, tell us about your journey thing. Um, <laughs> but in school, my with the global studies major, uh, my capstone project was focusing on um, something similar to like a sport for development and peace. Um, I looked through women's empowerment through soccer in Brazil and did some case studies from other locations around the globe. And from that and from my time, just as a camper and staff member, I knew that I wanted to somehow connect all those pieces with um, youth empowerment in particular, really showing and helping young people see that they are valuable for who they are as, you know, God's child and somehow connecting that with internationally. Um, so I looked at different areas of like, should I work at the UN? I don't know. Um, and then after some time of thinking about this, I was like, wait, this is exactly what we do at camp. <laughs> so it was the natural step. Um, but camp was really meaningful for me. I grew up with, um, I have four siblings and we're all fairly close in age. Uh, so, so, you know, a lot of the times we would all get clumped together and I didn't really feel like, you know, I was an individual in any way. I was just sort of part of the, the De Nicolai, as they called us. And at camp, even though my siblings were there at the same time, I never saw them, which, you know, is kind of funny because it's a pretty small camp, but um, <laughs> felt like I was valued and loved for, for just being me. I didn't have to be connected to my siblings in any way. And that was really powerful. So I feel like that sort of sparked uh, why I've been interested in um, that kind of part of camp. Well, Alex, you had mentioned that, um, you know, you kind of transitioned from not knowing what you were going to do. And then all of a sudden you knew what you were do in school. And then you went right to it right after you graduated from school. In fact, got out of school a little bit early so you could do it quicker than um, everyone else. Right. Tell us a little bit about your thinking and why all of a sudden it hits you and said, yeah, this is what I want to do. Well, <laughs> um, I think, well, backtracking to before I knew what I was going to do, I was about halfway through college. I quite honestly hadn't even declared being a political science major until halfway through college. So I wasn't really quick to jump the gun on making some decisions. And, but when I had entered into my junior year and I was really taking some time to seriously think and pray about the next steps to go forward, I was, a couple of things came to mind. Um, just one, what's going to help you progress? 
and and progression can take a lot of forms but i was thinking mostly well-rounded what can help you progress in um understanding what business is understanding the world you know what how can i use my political science in that way what's going to help me progress in being in qualities of patience love um, intelligence and all of them really pointed to camp there's so many things that i could or so many areas more so i could push myself at camp that i knew as you can see from that picture patience <laughs> is a virtue and that's something i knew like when i was the cit um i could tell you i was not the person you see in that picture at that point uh, and it took a lot of growth and i'm really grateful that i was able to have that because you can't go wrong with being kinder you can't go wrong with being more loving with understanding the people you're working with or who you're working for there's no limit to that um and so i was thinking okay what can help me get there camp camp really was that driving force there's no place that you can understand how to learn understand like the inner machinations of running a business um like a nonprofit, to getting out and just going and playing soccer with some kids <laughs> like you can't just do that in the same day but at camp you can um and really stretching myself in all areas i mean as an administrator what kind of stuff do you do on a daily basis and what are what are the things that you're supporting and how do you contribute in that office of yours Right. So I, I do, <laughs> I do a lot of things. Um, so I handle a lot of, um, trying to find the most concise way to put this, like I handle donations and donors and contacting, uh, contacting them. Um, I handle, uh, some content creation. Uh, I ha handle, paperwork, mostly a lot of the office paperwork um, and, and just, you know, the nitty gritty stuff with bills and such. I also do some staff training with Becca and I also run um, some of our just like little outlets of the camp store and and stuff of that nature. So I, I do everything that I can essentially. Um, and I also help with mostly, um, I was trying to find the right way to put this, uh, just along with content production, just business, or sorry, that the company expansion and, and what that entails and just some of that strategic planning as well. So a lot of dots to connect there. Um, it's, it's impressive. You, you both are so impressive in, in what you do and the way you do it and how you do it. Um, particularly with this past year, you know, where you were planning to open camp and then you had to shut down camp and then you, how are you going to, there's so many things that you guys have to deal with. It's a, it's incredible, uh, to think of what was put on your plate and how you've responded. Um, so I want I want to I want to kind of talk a little bit about that um, and kind of shift gears and change into um, what things you've been addressing and how you've how you've just re been re so remarkable in dealing with the issues that are present and trying to find ways to reach out into the community and in particular with the fact that your community really is global. So. Um, Talk to, uh, talk to me a little bit and talk to all of us about how the last nine months has changed for you guys and, 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 and what kind of have been, have been the most important uh, things to, that you've been facing and, and how, you, how you're addressing it. Cool. Uh, yeah, I can speak on that a little bit. I think with everything that has been going on, it was very tempting to, uh, 
I guess, give into the idea of, well, there's nothing we can do. We're on lockdown. We're physically restrained so much that there's not much we can do, especially with our program being centered around children coming to a public area where they can play and have time and be with each other for weeks at a time. And when it seems like that was just severed and not even um, gradually, but it seemed very sudden, uh, it was a chance for us to really rally back and say, okay, has, uh, as an organization who's pretty much like the polar opposite of what this whole world situation is trying to impose on us, what can we do to be able to maintain and fulfill our mission? Um, and as you can see with the, the two points right there, it was the concept of connection. And it th this has already been leading up to the summer. So there was, Zoom meetings already happening for schools and other clubs and organizations. So Zoom and video web chats were definitely already on the plate, but it was also thinking of how are we gonna revamp this? How are we gonna make something that's not sitting in front of screen for hours at a time and the kids just turn from screen to screen to do something else? So that's where our virtual program really comes in and, and Becca can definitely speak to that a lot more. Um, but uh, it, it's also following up with complacency uh, and the temptation of just kind of sitting there and saying, oh, well, what can we do? And instead of flipping it on its head and saying, okay, what can we do? What are we able to do? How can we push this boundary a little bit more? And we, there's no blueprint for it. There's not something we can look to and say, oh, all these other organizations have dealt with similar circumstance a b c or d and so we can kind of copy and paste it was definitely a forging of a path that we all had to sit down and think okay as a christian science organization that is international and about kids being in nature just na uh, na na whoa, excuse me naturally living in christian science and um and just being in nature in and of itself, how are we going to convey that over a webcam? And that's where the virtual programming really comes in again of what the structure, the format, and the content of these programs were. And yeah, we had some really fun ideas and some things that really, really took off. So, and Becca can speak more to that. Tell us a little bit about that, Becca. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, that delay. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think, um, you know, leading up to camp, it just the natural things, the checklist of things that we all at camp have to do to get ready. And with the uh, pandemic, you know, kind of shifting things a bit, it really enabled us to to pray really deeply and diligently about, you know, what is it that God wants for us to do? And how can we express camp um, in a way that's going to reach and meet needs? And like Alex mentioned, you know, how can we fulfill our mission? Um, but uh, yeah, and with that, like just so gratefully, camp teaches resilience. Um, in person, online, every day, here in the office. Um, and, you know, it's not that self or human will, but really knowing um, through prayer and that prayer-based guidance, um, God is our strength and direction and ability. And it's not us doing the work, it's God. And so, you know, we're just led to do what we need to do. And um, the ideas came to run this virtual program. The schedule that we ran um, really allowed for people from around the world to connect at different points in time so that they, you know, they could have, <laughs> it wasn't just East Coast time only. Um, and just so much gratitude for our summer staff. We actually did have staff on site. They weren't allowed to leave the camp property. <laughs> um, and we, there was a small crew, a small, funky and mighty crew and they just had 
incredible ideas for these programs. And so we were running camp. We did a kayaking class, baking, um, a science like experiment class. And it was phenomenal. The sense of newness um, that was brought this summer is something that we're so thankful for and that we're continuing on with our virtual program through the through the year. Um, but yeah, just knowing that a lot of the program was focused on skills and activities that the campers could do on screen with us, but then later on take home and you know do with their friends and do with their family that they're able to see um, with materials that they already would have at their home. Um, so yeah. How did you find um, you know the spiritual inspiration transferring over the waves you know into the universe that's out there how did how did you find that and and how how successful was that it's a great question um well i think just starting from the standpoint that god is ever present good and that god divine mind can never be fragmented that, you know, something that we already teach at camp and help the campers understand that whether they're in their cabin, on an overnight, in swim class, at home or at school, God is there. And the word of God doesn't need a computer screen, doesn't need Wi-Fi necessarily, but those are the tools that we have. Um, and I think that those connections that we made um, were just very clear demonstrations. Um, as many of you might have you know, already on this webinar that our camp Wi-Fi is not great. <laughs> and so we had to really prayerfully support that. But every class, every activity that we ran was really just a demonstration of divine mind in action. And as you see on the screen here, a map, that first thing under November sessions, we, we do have a program that we run called a metaphysical activity period map. Um, and those were really fun and really successful. And we had lots of fun, creative activities. Um, the whole purpose is just to deep dive into a metaphysical concept in an active way. So we did some arts and crafts, some moving around. There's like a metaphysical workout. Um, yeah, just some awesome things like that to really show that no matter what it is that we're doing, we're always expressing God. Well, I think it's it's wonderful. It's you know remarkable. I commend you. It's uh, the work that you're doing. Um, so, what is it going to look like in 2021? I mean, for for are you planning on in person camp? What what how how are you planning for this? We are planning yeah. for in person <laughs> camp, <laughs> um, but. You know, we, we have been continuing on our virtual programs. And so I don't think that there's any sense of fear or doubt or whatever, but it is whatever God wants us to do. So right now we are planning in-person camp. You know, we're setting up the registration. It's open. I'm talking with staff and hiring staff um, to come for in-person camp um, and just sort of having that expectation and thought that's sort of where it is right now. So um, in thinking about the things we talked about, um, I asked you guys for some takeaways. So mm -hmm. Becca, why don't you start first and tell us a little bit about what you mean when you say be truly invested. Those are actually my top takeaways. <laughs> Never mind. But, <laughs> we'll go back. <laughs> no worries. Um, but top takeaways uh, to be truly invested. Uh, I think that was, as I was mentioning, one of the things I was praying about was something I could see myself doing because as just going through school, there were classes I liked, classes I didn't like, and I would know what classes I enjoyed by sitting there and thinking, oh, what did I actually do today? <laughs> and seeing if I could remember. If I didn't, I was probably not invested. Um, but I, I definitely realized that that investment 
is something I should go for that don't do something that you're not going to give your best at because then you won't see what your best is. You won't be able to push your boundaries. You're just going to be in a, a vicious cycle of nine to five, clock in, clock out, get it done, and then that's it. And so, and that's, that's just no way to be. So, and it doesn't matter how big or small it is. If you can find one thing that you truly feel like you can grow and become just a little bit better in, that is progress. And so, and, and moving on to that second point, mapping out steps of progress, record your victories, record some like things that you felt good about. And that's great because you can go back to all to times where you might be in a tough spot in a hard place and you can look back. It's almost in my equivalent, when you do have healings and I know a lot of people do this and I do too. I, I make note of the healings that I do have because I can go back and see what really inspired me. And it's not, you know, a, a formula that you can plug and play and it works every time, but it's something that you have context for. It's something that you know what the feeling is of making that progress and, and starting to make headway. And I keep that feeling with me around almost daily. I, I make sure I don't forget what that feeling is because once you have a hold of it, it's something that you can use as a compass. And I use that as my compass, especially when I'm having my mini convos with God um, and I'm asking and wondering about what something is. When I feel that pull, that tug um, of all the times I've had success uh, lead me towards somewhere, that's how I, I start to really move in that direction. So yeah, those are really like those two huge points. And the last one, I know it sounds pretty corny and redundant, but work ethic does go a long, long way. And that goes for things that you're both invested in, maybe not truly invested in. But I remember that I had a couple jobs in college, but one that I applied for and I wasn't quite invested in it per se but by the end of it i love that job that was one of my favorite jobs in college and it was simply because i decided okay well how can i gain skills off of this how am i going to push myself to map out these steps and to be truly invested and Sometimes it, it, you have to go through hard parts to get to the good parts. Hard work goes a long way. And it's not so much working for no reason, but knowing what you're working hard for. If a job that you're maybe not invested in currently right now, it, it's, it, it's okay if it's not your end point, but show the people that who are looking at you and who do want to see that work ethic and who you're trying to prove that work ethic to, I can work in any situation. If you can prove you can work in any situation, they're not going to be afraid to look to you when they most need it. So those are just some things that I'd really um, gained throughout college and just growing up. Um, and it, it was a lot of thanks to my mom uh, who taught me a lot of these things that I was able to lock in and, and, and bolt down what I want to do. Becca, what would you like to add? Yeah, I think uh, kind of going off of that, but maybe frame it in a different way. Um, I think that for any work or job opportunity, it's really not about what you can gain or what you can, you know, get out of something, but what it is that you can bring and what you can share and what you can give um, for that work ethic. Um, you know, it's, it's the continual learning and taking initiative, um, really being willing um, with a sense of humility, uh, and of course, always following with God's direction. I, I think, Robin, we were talking about the um, having a holistic and spiritual work ethic, which is something that we talk about here at Crystal Lake Camps. And that's just been really um, amazing for me to think about every day, just to, to understand that it is, you know, letting God's day unfold for you and, and what steps you need to take um, and being willing and with that, 
that sense of humility and meekness uh, to do whatever it is that God wants for you to do. Um, and it might not look like the way that you had expected it to or that you want it to look, um, but it's always going to be such a blessing for you and for others. Um, and um, yeah, just, I, yeah, I think that's sort of what I wanted to add. <laughs> Well, I know that you guys are looking for staff. You mentioned that earlier um, and, and um, with the current job opportunities that are open. So you are interviewing presently for those positions. Is that correct? Good, good. So why should I come and be a camp counselor at your camp when I can do so many other things in life? Well, <laughs> a lot of reasons. Um, not only will you learn so many of the skills that employers uh, are looking for nowadays, this, the resilience, the hard work, the work ethic, the dis, uh, responsible decision-making, um, listening, empathy, things of that nature. You get to do that on the fly every single day. Um, Working at camp, you know, you're not only stuck in one sort of position, you experience so many things that teach you incredible life lessons. Um, being a staff member at camp, you, you learn how to, you learn how to let God lead you. Um, and you really have to know that it is God doing the work. Um, <laughs> because it's hard work, but it's the most rewarding and the most amazing. And you do gain a lot of skills. You learn time management. You think you might know about time management, but if you've ever worked with kids and had to do planning and had to, you know, be in charge of a few different programs, um, yeah, it's a little bit different than what you thought that you knew about time management from college or <laughs> from school, uh, from doing assignments and stuff. Um, and you do gain hands-on experience in a lot of different facets. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> the simplest way to put it is if you want to push yourself to grow, I would say try your hand at being a counselor. Like it's unparalleled. I've never, I've, I've done like a lot, I've done sports and I've done plenty of you know, leadership kind of programming. And when you're a counselor, that just goes out the window in terms of just really understanding what it means to be selfless or really understanding what it means to, I don't wanna say think outside the box, but Take it another step further, understanding that there is more that can be done and finding a way to do that. And I just really had the blessing to honestly be in a lot of these areas that the current job, job opportunities are listing. I was the boys head counselor and I like have worked in the kitchen. I've, I've worked at the stables. I've done my fair share of maintenance. All of these things are not <laughs> obviously the same, but now I can be comfortable in any of these places, no matter where my job takes me. And having a rudimentary understanding of, of a lot of basic things, it's a jack of all trades, master of none kind of scenario, but it, it doesn't have to stay that way. And it can be more than just a surface level um, but this is more of a springboard towards that. So, yeah. And also, oh, and one other thing I, I kind of do want to mention is that we are, as a camp, that we are also growing a lot. And we've had the opportunity to expand internships to being more than just camp internships, I guess, in the very common sense. But we've extended it to business and we've extended it to um just understanding more of the global sphere. I mean, we do have an international camp, so it's not that surprising. And, and really moving up the ladder in terms of what we can do and what we can provide. 
Well, kind of wrapping up, Beck, anything you'd like to say about this particular slide and the organizations and resources? Sure. Yeah, the American Camp Association is how um, many of the camps are accredited. And it's a series of <laughs> different regulations and whatnot that we need to follow as a camp. But um, they do provide a lot of resources in terms of um, education, they have webinars, they have uh, different articles, they have a magazine, things like that. So it's not just super like, you know, roasting marshmallows around the fire sort of thing, but it, all facets and areas of camp that you could be involved with, they have resources and educational opportunities for. Um, and then for the career re resources, we um, here at CLC, we use Camp Brain, which is a software uh, system. They're based in Toronto. And, you know, just thinking about careers, you know, how does camp and something like a political or not political, uh, computer science, there we go, that's the one, some coding stuff, things that I, you know, don't know a whole lot about. Um, but, you know, how do those go hand in hand, but every camp uses a software system, and they're just a really wonderful company and we love uh, their work and I know that a lot of times they do um, have job opportunities and so um, and internship opportunities so they're they're right. really great to work with. Well, the hour goes really fast and we're at our wrap up and final Q and a and I'm going to launch our poll so that um, those that are on with us today can help us by completing this poll and telling us, giving us your feedback. It's real important. It only takes just a few moments to finish and complete. But while we're, while we're doing that, I, I had a few questions that came in. Um, one is from Corinne and she asked, I've never been to CLC. Could I still participate in any online activities? What are the ages? Who's welcome? Um, kind of give us the lowdown. Yeah, that's a yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a variety of programs. Um, I'll talk through a little bit more of the programmy ones, and then if you want to do like the moonlight yeah. things. So we have maps. Uh, we have one next Thursday, actually, a metaphysical activity that we're doing open to all ages. Um, and we read the lesson every Monday evening here in the East Coast, um, 8.30, and Sermon on the Mount, we read at 2 p.m. Eastern every week. Those are sort of weekly activities. Um, and then we have a, a Christian science themed book club um, that Alex and Lyndon, who's our marketing and outreach coordinator, uh, run every other Tuesday. So all of those events are open for any age. Um, and you can just hit me up and I'll shoot you the info. But then we also have... So we also have um, a couple of other projects that we have been working on. Moonlit Chronicles, which is where we read bedtime stories. And so that's on our YouTube channel. And we've been uh, pushing that out during the summer. And now we've started picking it back up now that we've gotten time. And then we also have a podcast. And so the podcast is called Pioneers of Truth. And it's about... Christian science pioneers um, in the early stages. And so it talks about a lot of the history, world history context, uh, context um, a lot of what those workers went through, what um, the pinnacle of Christian science was in their demonstration, how they contributed to the movement and how it's still being seen to this day. So yeah, we have a lot of virtual programs that you can be a part of. And so it's on our website also, uh, which we always can, we're happy to provide that information. Great. Um, Betsy Ray says, I was a camper at CLC decades ago, and I want to be of help now. You have any ideas for Betsy? Hi, Betsy. So glad you're joining us. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, as kind of an adult, you know, like coming to our programs, supporting our programs, volunteering during the programs are all really wonderful ways to support camp and, and stay involved. Um, also, you know, spreading the word about our programs just with family and friends and inviting people to come and connect and talk with us. Uh, those are some really, really solid ways that we love, you know, having people help us with. And our dear friend Judith Patterson says, since I'm in a similar business and also work with Partners for Youth Empowerment, PYE, and telling the story of the human condition through our next generation of artists, 
I'm enjoying hearing your journey, which is mirroring ours. I'd love to have the opportunity to talk with you further. Hopefully we can connect offline and I think we can help with that. We love Judith, love you guys. I think it'd be really fun to see that connection. Um, that'd be great. So um, we're kind of at the end of our tour here, guys, as much as I hate to say it and wish that we could just keep going and going. I promise that I it'd be an hour and that would be the, the stopping point. We're just about at that point. Um, just a quick reminder for everyone. We have great resources in the Career Alliance website at abfcareeralliance.org. Um, go check it out. Wonderful, uh, wonderful things there. Our life launch course is there. If you want to connect with Alex and um, Becca, you can easily request the connection through the ABF Career Alliance. We'll help you get connected with them. Please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, and connect with us on LinkedIn. Thank you all for completing the poll. I appreciate that very much. And for, um, for all of you out there, uh, you're familiar with our Brotherly Love campaign. Please let your students, the students that you know, the families that you know, um, the friends that you know, to now's the time to start applying for the spring semester. So get your applications in. I shared with you the website earlier. Let me tell you one more time. It's abfcareeralliance.org. You just click on the tab above and you'll find the application for North America. If you're an international student. You can click on the international tab uh, to go there. So Please, just a quick reminder, tell your friends, tell your family to get those applications in so that we can help support our students come springtime. Well, I think you guys helped us think about casting our net on the right side, you know, overcoming challenges. My gosh, you guys, your whole world turned upside down, went 180 degrees. And what great leaders you are to be able to respond with such magnificent and wonderful programming to help families all over the world. And I, for one, just wanna tell you how much I appreciate that, how, 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 how it is, how I feel so blessed to know you. I can't wait to see you this summer. Um, and thank you, thank you so much for being guests today with us. Well, thank you so much, Robin. Yeah. We appreciate everything that you do with Albert Baker Fund, and it's been just a really amazing partnership that we've had, and we love having you at camp, so you're always welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you. And I have to thank the incredible team at the Albert Baker Fund. Um, I, I can't tell you how tirelessly they all work and, and, the, and the wonderful job that they all do in thinking um, about the world that we live in today and working to come up with ideas and solutions and help so thanks again, guys, at the Albert Baker Fund. And thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Have a wonderful weekend and tune in next week. we got a really cool guest coming in. She's got some special friends. One of them's name is Cookie Monster. So can't wait, to, can't wait for that. So have fun and we'll see you all soon. <laughs>